Over 90% of the world's rice production is located in Asia. They have a rich history of cultivating rice, tracing back over 10,000 years to their ancient civilizations, which literally sounds impossible to imagine, but that's not the problem. The problem is most Asians consume rice without ever getting fat. Americans and European countries eat the same thing and tend to get fat within days. Think about this. The world's least obese country is Japan. And guess what? They are part of the world's top producers of rice on this planet. So what's their secret? Well, there's a scientific reason why this happens. And the good thing is, they are so practical, anyone can apply them to their lives to either prevent or lose weight, if that's their goal. There are two main unbreakable factors that stand behind the reason why countries like Japan, South Korea, and many other Asian countries seem to have less obese citizens compared to any other country in the world. These factors are the same golden factors that every person who has ever lost weight has leveraged to change their life. The first unbreakable factor is their dietary practices, and the second is their lifestyle practices. These are the main ancient factors that stand behind the health and longevity of these people. Have you ever wondered if there is a difference between the type of rice that's eaten in Asian countries versus the ones that are eaten in the Western part of the world? This is what factor one is all about, which is their dietary practices. There's a common belief that there's a special type of rice that most Asians countries are exposed to which is basically making them more healthier than other countries, considering the fact that they have a higher lifespan expectancy rate than any other continent in the world. The truth is, yes, there are different types of rice, and some of those rice may not be common in the western part of the world. But no, those types of rice are not the main reason why they don't get fat eating rice. Let me explain. In general, there are two main types of rice, the ones that retain their bran and germs after processing, providing more fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Examples of such rice include brown rice, black rice, and red rice. This type of rice is what most people people refer to as whole grain rice. The second type of rice is the refined grain rice. This type of rice has had its bran and germ removed during processing, resulting in a lighter texture, milder flavor, and with fewer nutrients compared to whole grain rice. Examples of refined rice are the white rice, which is the most common rice on the planet, jasmine rice, and sushi rice. These are the two main types of rice we have on this planet. So anytime you're eating rice, it's either you're eating a whole grain rice, which is more healthier, or refined grain rice, which has lost most of its nutritional value through processing. Remember, our goal is to find out whether the type of rice eaten by Asians is naturally designed to make them not gain fat, ultimately helping them to live a healthy, longer life, free from any terrible disease like type 2 diabetes, stroke, and even cancer. The truth is, in Asia, both refined rice, popularly known as white rice, and whole grain rice, which most refer to as brown rice, are commonly consumed. On average, an individual in an Asian country like China or Japan consumes over 100 kilograms of rice annually. To put this into perspective, that's about the weight of 200 medium-sized watermelons. It's enough to fill a small swimming pool, typically around 10 feet by 20 feet, with an average depth of 4 feet. That's approximately 6,000 gallons of rice filling up the pool. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of rice. The same research paper continued by affirming what I previously said, that 99% of the type of rice consumed in Asian countries is white rice, and this data is the same for every single country that eats rice, which is every country on the planet. Now, the reason why we consume brown rice or whole grain rice less isn't what you're thinking. If anything, it's the opposite of that. It's not because brown rice is bad for our health or anything of that sort. If anything, brown rice is way better than white rice in nutritional content. Plus, it has a special ability in helping people manage their fat gains. Pay close attention to this. When you eat foods like bread, rice, or even pasta, your body breaks them down into a type of sugar called glucose. The glucose is then released into the bloodstream. There's a chemical in you called insulin that helps you to regulate the amount of sugar or glucose in your blood. When your blood sugar rises up after eating carbohydrates like rice, your pancreas, which is a small organ behind your stomach, releases insulin. The insulin acts like a key that unlocks the doors of your cells. This lets the glucose from your bloodstream enter your cells, where it's used for energy. Now, ideally, you want your blood sugar to rise and fall slowly. This helps your body to effectively use the sugar or glucose for energy without any problems. If your blood sugar goes up and down quickly, it can cause your body to store extra calories as fat. This happens because your cells get too much glucose all at once, so your body saves it for later use. Now, when it comes to brown rice, it has fiber, which is the main thing that slows down how quickly your body digests carbs. This means your blood sugar rises more slowly after eating brown rice. This can help prevent spikes in blood sugar and keep your body from storing calories as fat. So by now, it's crystal clear to you that consuming brown rice has some potential in preventing fat gain. But the problem is, this is not the entire truth. So what does the truth really say about brown rice and fat loss? According to the United States Department of Agriculture's National Nutrient Database, one cup of brown rice contains about 218 calories, while one cup of white rice contains about 242 calories. It's absolutely clear that the difference between the calorie content of brown rice and white rice is minimal. 
while brown rice may offer slightly more fiber and nutrients like magnesium and phosphorus. The calorie discrepancy between the two types of rice is not significant enough to single-handedly cause weight loss. This simply means eating brown rice alone won't guarantee you lose weight, especially if you're consuming it in excess amounts. But even if brown rice was solely enough to cause weight loss in some Asian countries, it wouldn't be enough to make even one country among the 49 countries in Asia lean. It's just impossible. And this research proves it with data that 99% of people generally dislike like brown rice for its poor taste and its inability to last longer when stored. And due to this fact, less than 10% of rice cultivators plant it. Now I know you're probably thinking, if brown rice itself isn't the main factor behind the lean and healthy nature of most Asian countries, what is? Is it white rice or something totally different? Yes, you're right. It's obviously white rice, since there isn't any other type of rice on the planet. But the big problem is, losing fat has nothing to do with white rice. In fact, if anything, they are the complete opposite of each other. Research has shown that white rice or rice in general has a high glycemic index compared to many other starchy foods. A glycemic index is the measure of how quickly a carbohydrate food, and in our case, white rice, raises your blood sugar levels. Foods with a high glycemic index are easily digested converted into glucose and absorbed quickly into the bloodstream, causing a rapid spike in blood sugar levels. And whenever your blood sugar level goes up and down quickly, as I've previously said, it causes your body to store extra calories, which was supposed to be used for energy, as fat. This happens because your cells can't utilize too much glucose all at once, so your body saves it as fat. This means repeatedly consuming white rice, especially in large quantities, will inevitably lead to fat gain, which is the foundation of bigger and dangerous diseases like type 2 diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, and other severe and harmful diseases that often make life unpleasant for people. This raises a bigger question. If white rice basically makes you gain fat, why aren't they fat? So here are the two main discoveries we have currently made till this point. One, the idea that there's a special type of rice that's naturally designed to make the Asians stay lean and healthy and ultimately living longer is completely wrong. There's no special rice. Two, the fact that science has proven that rice increases fat gain and yet there are over millions, if not billions of people who eat rice on a daily basis without getting lean. What this means is, it's not really about the type of food you eat when it comes to fat management. It's all about how you eat those foods. So here are the three simple dietary practices that will change how you see fat loss forever. One is the quantity. In most Asian countries, rice is often served as a complementary element rather than the main focus of the meal. Portion sizes tend to be smaller compared to the Western part of the world. This approach encourages moderation in calorie intake and helps individuals in that part of the world maintain a healthier weight. Now, fat loss is not as complicated as most people have made it. You don't necessarily need to stop eating any specific type of meal to lose weight. And this is proven by the fact that more than half of the entire Asian population consumes white rice every single day, which is generally considered to be high in calories without ever being fat. Consider this, brown rice is generally known to have fewer calories compared to white rice. Because of that fact, it's easy to assume that eating white rice will lead to weight gain. While there is some truth to this, the real secret to fat loss lies in calorie balance. You could consume excess amounts of brown rice, which is considered low calorie, and still gain weight if your overall calorie intake exceeds your body's needs. On the other hand, someone who consumes smaller portions of white rice, despite its higher calorie content, may still lose weight if their overall calorie intake is lower. So as simple and easy as it may seem, reducing the intake of a high calorie food is just enough to directly affect your fat loss efforts without going through the constant struggle and self-disappointment that comes with forcing yourself to jump into eating some foods you hate. Instead, you can live the lifestyle you desire and still be extremely healthy. After managing the quantity of your meals, which is the first and arguably the most important dietary practice, the next dietary practice is balance. Asian diets often incorporate a diverse array of foods, including vegetables, lean proteins such as tofu, fish, and chicken breast, along with small amounts of healthy fats. This balanced approach not only ensures individuals receive a wide range of nutrients, but also supports weight loss through various mechanisms. For instance, the lean proteins found in these diets are efficiently digested and absorbed, contributing to a higher metabolic rate. This increased metabolic rate allows the body to burn more calories, directly aiding in weight loss right after balance. The third dietary practice of the Asians that allows them to maintain such health and fat-free life is their cooking methods. Some Asian countries are known for their cooking methods like steaming, which if you are not already aware of, involves cooking food over boiling water. This cooking method preserves the nutrients in foods while requiring minimal or no added fats. The next cooking method is boiling. Boiling involves cooking ingredients in water or broth without the addition of oil or fat. By boiling food without added fats, Asians can avoid the excess calories and saturated fats commonly found in fried or oil-cooked dishes. 
which is common in other parts of the world. And lastly, stir frying. This involves quickly cooking ingredients in a small amount of oil over high heat. These cooking methods work to reduce fat by minimizing the use of added fats and oils, which has a direct effect on reducing or preventing fat gain. The main purpose of this video was not to talk about rice. The main purpose was to break the old concept that one needs a special something to lose fat. You don't need a special time before you start thinking about losing weight. In fact, you can make it a lifestyle, like most Asian countries have. You can still enjoy all the foods you enjoy and still not gain unwanted fats. It's all under your control. If you find this video helpful in any way, like it, because that's the only way YouTube will send it to millions of people like yourself, who will also benefit from it. Now, we believe we humans can live longer than we think, so our goal is to make practical health information accessible to you in the most simplified form, so you can make your health a lifestyle, instead of something you struggle to do on a daily basis.